She has sent a fair bit of interest my way lately. Very lovely. You've been anywhere else interesting in Tingledom? Hmm. Oh, for me? Yeah. You're equal to yourself. Oh, that's very kind of you to ask. Hmm. Well, how much time do you have? I could spend forever talking about quilts. Let's see. I have to break it down. Um, if we're talking wall hangings, ooh, can't go past Queen Flyby in the Winter Wood. Those commission hanging in Tingledom Castle. Now, you been over there? I don't remember if it's on display or if it's in the but it's um, an image. It has Queen Flyby in the middle, adorned in her beautiful apparel, a tiara on head, but just kind of unassuming in the middle of this winter wood. It's dark, but also light because it's all snow covered. You can tell it's, you know, a nighttime scene. And just the shadows of the wood around. It just looks like such a quiet, peaceful place. Yeah, she actually took me to one of her favorite places to go and contemplate, which is in Perpetual Winter. So that was the inspiration for the wall hanging and um, very special experience for me to get to uh, be in the Queen's confidence like that. So, that was very special. Uh, also in the castle I have uh, Thanksgiving at Dingledom Castle. Uh, <laughs> I'm just uh, salivating at the thought, was a very hunger-inducing quilt to make. Uh, yeah, based off of all of the dishes and all the lovely yummies that you get at a Tingledom feast. Uh, but it also has the people, so it's not just a table, it shows it's a kind of a 3D semi-realistic, but I did it with um, batiks, so they're planes, but anyway, it's really got a really nice texture to it. Visually, it's quite flat, and it's because of the dyeing. Uh, I dyed so many fabrics for that one, but it was so worth it. They were I think it turned out really, really good. I'm very proud of that one. And then I also, cause did you come over on Tingledom Airways? Or, well, on every seat in Tingledom Airways, I was, another commission that I had was scenes from Tingledom. And those are kind of in a, rather than kind of a photorealist style, or kind of a painting style, they're more a stained glass style. 
And so it gives you little, uh, some of my favorite places from around Tangledom. And so each individual chair has its own scene, so if you do fly back, it's worth going and looking all around on them. You can see them. There's also a few that are a bit larger that are dotted around the city. I think the tourist information has one, though I don't think they have it up right now, but anyway. Um, And then there's one at the gallery, and yeah, there's a few around. But that was a really fun series to do, and you know, very big honor to be selected to do something so integrative as, you know, integrated into the seats as people come in. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge as well, because I had to choose very robust materials. Yeah, so I ended up doing a covering over them, so we have like a PVC type covering over them um, that's been magically imbued to not feel like PVC, so it still feels really, really comfy. Yeah, it's actually magical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really just like a PVC vinyl, but, uh, well, magic makes up for a lot, but that really protects the scenes behind, so we can just replace the PVC, yeah, and all that. So probably for wall hangings, those have to be my favorites. For quilts themselves, kind of bed type quilts, oh, there was one I did that was really, really special. It's titled Ramsey's Life. Uh, it was a commission by uh, parents who had lost a child. Yeah, Ramsey was 12. So I never met Ramsey, but I kind of feel like I know Ramsey because of the quilt. So we took basically, there's four scenes on the quilt that are, three of them are basically images from different stages of Ramsey's life. And then the third one is an image of, you know, um, just the shape of a boy a bit older than Ramsey was, on a path kind of off in the distance, kind of an indication of the journey continuing, you know, somewhere else type thing. Um, and it was a very special quilt to make because I know, I know it meant a lot to the parents. And I think it's something that helps them feel connected to the son that they lost. Um, so I think nothing really has ever topped that as far as, you know, just kind of really, like, this is just so important, I need to do this, you know? Yeah. And that was, it was really an honor to do that and just to be able to take part in that healing and, and everything that came along with that for them. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, quilts also. One of my favorites is the one hanging behind us. I never have my rainbow quilt too far away. Uh, made it very early in my quilting journey. But it's a big symbol of the, uh, things that matter a lot to me in my quilting. Bright colors and simplistic patterns can lead to, you know, more fun. I don't know. Something about it. I've always loved it. No, no, it wasn't my first quilt. No, definitely not. 
Now, I've been quilting for a long time, since I was very young, um, but it was kind of my rebirth for quilting, I suppose. Yeah, it's kind of my favorite personal quilt, I guess. Still like to make a bigger one sometime. But I always uh, have so many other quilts to make, so it doesn't always happen. Um, I've also been a few other projects. Uh, kind of quilt related or kind of fabric art related. I did the floor of the lava room at the Tingledom Hotel. If you no, you're staying at the inn. Okay, well, that's I've, I've done quite a few quilts for there as well, which are lovely, but. At, uh, at the hotel, they have a lava room, um, which is basically designed to feel like the inside of a volcano. And it's super, super cool. A real uh, collaborative effort between a lot of us to try and pull this off, and I feel like my part was kind of the least of it, but... You have a fabric um, floor. Mm. Um, I did the quilt in there as well, but the quilt wasn't really as big of a challenge because it was quite small <laughs> compared to the flooring. Um, but so you've got this like lot, so it's supposed to, it gives you the effect of kind of that you're hovering a bit above lava so that you're not right in the lava, but you're close, you know? Um, and the reason we did it as a fabric floor, it's covered as well, so it's actually got kind of like a shellac type thing on top of it. It's because you can also do that sort of thing with like concrete or paint, that sort of thing, but uh, we wanted something that would be less cold because it should be very kind of heat inducing. So there's actually heat underneath and then we got heat resistant fabric. Yeah, it's got a, it's got that like heating in floor heating in the room anyway. Uh, but it's a really unique shape as well. So it's not actually like a square room at all. It's actually shaped like kind of the dome top of a, a volcano a little bit up the top where it actually has a window looking out to the sky. It's so cool. And they sometimes like puff off smoke at the top as well so you can see smoke above. Anyway, it's a really cool room. I highly recommend it for your next trip. Of course, keep staying at the inn. There's lots of lovely things at the inn as well. But yeah, that floor was really fun. Um, another one I did was around Christmas at, um, there's a few that I did, there's actually a few different types of tree skirts that you get up at the castle, which is obviously the main event, um, so I've done a few of them, but there was this one I did which I really, really loved, it had all these different scenes, like kind of Santa scenes, so you have, like, elves working on toys in the workshop, and then the reindeer in the stables, and then, of course, like, the main central scene is that classic Santa in the sleigh, reindeer out in front in the night sky, the sleigh, you know, covered, just bursting with toys to give out to children. And then there's a scene going down, you know, like down a chimney scene. And then there's Mrs. Claus just cozied up next to a fire. I just had to have Mrs. Claus in there. I don't know. Anyway, so that one I was really, really happy with. I uh, just really got to use my creative juices to, you know, figure out exactly what I wanted. 
was a lot of fun. It's a little bit more kind of a cartoony type feel, but not super cartoony. Rather than, you know, some of mine are very, very realistic. This one's a little bit more latitude and, you know, a bit more fun. So, yeah. I think those would, those would be some of my top projects. It's funny, I've never actually done a Bargello. Just, you know, throwing that out there. I'm not saying that you should do a Bargello. Just saying, I've never done one. <laughs> so, did you come here to discuss a potential quilt commission? Or... I don't actually have trying to think because there's like three hanging up and I think they're all spoken for because I do occasionally get some time to just work on some quilts but they usually yeah, go out faster than I even finish them before I've quilted them so right now I don't think I have any quilts that are kind of in progress so if you want something you're gonna have to make it very busy woman who has all the time in the world for you. <laughs> mm, that's a difficult question. If I could make anything in the world. You like to ask the hard questions, don't you? I like this. It's a good, good trait. Hmm. I'd like to, well, I was telling you before, I'd really like to make another rainbow quilt. I've been on the hunt for some really pretty rainbow colors. Yeah, I dye fabric, but, um... That's usually about making something precise. I'm more I'm on a discovery journey, you know, wanting to discover the colors that I want. That's what I'm excited about. But, I mean, I don't expect you to just, you know, buy a rainbow quilt. Just because that's what well, see, I actually had one. I, I mocked up this design for a rainbow quilt that had, like, easy pieces. So it's like an easy piece rainbow design going through. Oh, and it's kind of... So you end up with, like, red around. It ends up with kind of a rainbow going around. Because you have red or... I think it... Oh, I think it was really intense, actually. It was like real, I think it was small, easy pieces. I never made it, so I don't actually remember the sizing, because it was, I did not, I just designed it on the computer. And then in the middle was this little rainbow, like, scene design. So it actually had a rainbow in it, and then like a little tree, and a bird, and, you know, blue skies, and that sort of thing. I'd probably do a completely different scene if I was going to do that nowadays, but the fabrics were gorgeous. I don't remember if they were Hoffman Batiks or what they were. Yeah, now that's my problem is, for myself, I always get held up at the uh, design stage and never uh, make the plunge into the next stage. And nowadays I have, you know, so many things stacking up that it just never really happens. Yeah. I mean, I could do that. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, that one's kind of... I know I never made the I mean, we 
agree on that, but it's kind of been done because I imagined it already. You know, if it's for you, I want to imagine you brand new. Well, about... See, something I've been thinking about as well... You know, in New York Beauty, those are like the circle, and they... I know, I really am not very convincing about being who I am. Oh, it's because quilting is very mathematical, so you don't actually have to able to draw. But anyway, New York Beauty is kind of the style. Have you ever seen that? I've been curious, I've, and I've never really kind of done the next step, which is to think about how would you do a New York Beauty rainbow quilt? Now that is a prospect that really interests me. Because I'm like, well, because they kind of are interlocking circles, but not kind of like, because you know, a wedding, a wedding ring is kind of just, you know, kind of like Olympic rings, but not offset, so they just lock in. Whereas the New York beauties end up being a little bit different. And so, and you have, you know, these really angular parts, little triangle parts within the, uh, within the design. And so I think it'd be really fun, So, because you, you could do it like a fan, you could do it the rainbow around the circle itself, but then how would, you know, how would you fit that all together to make, you know, that's an interesting, interesting problem, you know, that to me is worth mocking up. Well, there's lots of gorgeous New York beauties. So, if you were going for a rainbow, I mean, I am a huge fan of kind of traditional rainbow, but this isn't about me, this is about you. So, I mean, because we can go kind of off-tone as well, so more kind of turquoise fuchsia, rather than just kind of pure red, orange, yellow, you know? You kind of get more uh, rust and... You like more the pure colors? Okay. Well, we're on the same page, and I love pure colors. So we're gonna go pure rainbow. Now, I'm... My... my inclination is to go towards black for neutrals and I don't usually use white also because if you're going to use it for a bed quilt it's notoriously hard to clean then I mean or yeah I mean yeah if you want to go with no neutrals you can a little bit harder to get a lot of variance in value that way because then I have to do that all within the colors themselves and that doesn't necessarily work that well with pure colors yeah just to get the contrast I mean if we're gonna have really bright pure colors the high contrast is gonna be a really nice look it's not gonna this isn't going to be a muted quilt, so low contrast probably. Sorry on the blacks. We can go, I mean, we can even kind of do a bit of variation, kind of gray, dark gray, charcoal, black. So we have a little bit of play there. Okay. So... Gray to dark gray to charcoal to black for our neutrals. 
Now with a pure rainbow, I tend to go 12 colors, so kind of, you know, two reds, two oranges, two yellows, two greens. If you go less, mm, I don't think less is going to work. You can go more if you like a bit more, kind of, really like a, a spectrum type thing. And we can go lots of colors, you know, we can go 24, we can go 48. Yeah. And then, I mean, then we can really play with value if you wanted to. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, I'll, I'll make whatever work anyway. Okay, and then size. So we're talking lap quilt, twin, queen, queen. Something I think would be nice is we could do it. Usually, you see a New York beauty set in square, but we could actually do it with a round edge, like you see with double wedding ring. Could we do that? Oh, we could maybe do a mixed edge, so have like one at the corner. Maybe just a single one. So I'm thinking it's kind of this sort of shape. So you have, of course, what on the bed? It's not gonna. I don't know, but I agree. Yeah, with that on the bed. That may not work. But yeah, no. Some fun things there, like yellow in the middle, orange around, or the other way around. It could kind of look like some starburst, red coming out. I don't know. We could have some fun combinations there. What about black in the middle and then going out? Oh, yeah. No, I think I think this will be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Makes me just want to jump onto my computer and start playing right now, actually. Yeah, we did what we were doing, didn't you? Well, yeah, then I will just go and do that now. And thanks for taking the time to, you know, chat with me, find out. You know, I love talking about my quilts. It's always so fun. So thanks for your interest. And thanks for uh, lighting a fire in me. I am really excited to discover this quilt. Yeah, now we'll be in contact. Um, how long are you here? Yeah, why don't you stop by? Just stop by. Give me like three days. Then you should stop by again and we can see what I've come up with. Okay? Okay. Well, I look forward to seeing you then. Okay, bye bye. Thank you for joining us for this week's Tingle Them Tuesday. There's a new video in Tingledom every single Tuesday. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you are new to Tingledom, be sure to hit subscribe or else you may I do a daily 
ASMR video. A different theme every day. So you can check out Map Mondays, Whisper Wednesdays, Food Fridays. sure to comment down below for your chance to be featured in my monthly viewers appreciation video on the 25th of each month and have a 